Um, <laughs> so thank you all for coming into this uh, Weaver Fever with me um, and for indulging my insane title. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, like Trisha said, um, this project is a little bit longer. So I'm going to be moving pretty quick because I do want to make sure in this recording you guys see the entire process. Um, I've got the instructions for you that detail everything, but I do want to make sure we actually get it on the recording because it is a little bit easier um, to watch than necessarily read on the um, information sheet. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in to the main project. Um, we go. And I will say it's been a couple of years since I taught this class. Uh, I've taught it many, many, many times. So if I'm moving too quick and you have questions, like Trisha said, please raise your hand or uh, type in the chat so that we can get those addressed. But I am going to move, you know, as quickly as I feel like I, I can to get all the information. So um, weaving. So there's a lot of different styles of weaving and it kind of came back into fashion a little bit maybe about five years ago so i want to go ahead and we're going to go through our supply list first and then i'm going to pop back over to the computer and we're going to do a little i'm going to give you a little presentation of some of my work and i want to give you a little bit of time to gather your supplies if you don't have them um, during that little presentation piece so things you should have um, handy most of you got a supply kit. Now we do have several people joining tonight who maybe didn't get one provided by the library, so you might still be gathering some of your supplies and that's totally cool. Um, you're going to have a variety of yarns, so you should have some thicker yarns, you should have some thinner yarns, and most Im importantly, you should have this cotton yarn. So that one for most everybody I think is this kind of like oatmeal colored with some little speckles in it. So please have that one set aside. And you're also going to want to have a piece of cardboard. In your instructions, it says six by eight inch. And that's important actually, because I didn't provide you with enough supplies to make a gigantic wall hanging. You certainly could make a larger one if you want, but I'm not gonna guarantee that you'll have enough supplies for that. So six by eight is about the size that I recommend using for this project with the supplies that I have provided. Um, and other thing you'll need is scissors. And something I didn't mention on the supply sheet, I realized I forgot, is a ruler. It's, it's optional. I'd say it's helpful, but it's not a necessity for you to complete this project. So really, those are the main things you're going to want. Um, also, in your kit, you should have had this little um, tapestry needle. So they're all bright orange. Hopefully, I wanted them to kind of stick out in your bag and not actually get, accidentally get tossed. So tapestry needle, again. A tapestry needle isn't really necessary for the project, but it does make it quite a bit easier, especially um, working on such a small wall hanging. It's going to be a little bit easier to kind of see what you're doing and guide your thread where it needs to go. So we're going to pop back over to the computer now that you've kind of seen the supplies you need, and I'm going to kind of give you a little idea about what we're doing here. Do, do, do. Okay, so weaving. I started weaving probably about five, six years ago maybe now. Um, and I just want to do a quick little pop through of some of my projects that I've done in the past. So hopefully this is working. It's not advancing for me real good here. Okay, so I make a lot of different pieces. Uh, I want to kind of show you some in progress pieces as well as some finished pieces. So you can see my cat here. Um, I started weaving also when I had kittens, which was an insane choice because they knotted up a lot of my yarn. Um, but I just want to give you an idea. You can do a lot of different things with uh, weaving. It's not necessarily just wall hangings. Um, you can make pillows, you can make rugs. Um, these are a little bit more modern uh, weaving style. And I tend to work pretty uh, loosely. I don't like to follow a pattern with a lot of things in life. <laughs> and weaving is no different. So um, here I've used a little bit of macrame technique. We've got some tassels going on here. 
Um, you'll also notice through some of my uh, projects, I use different things to hang wall hangings on. So here I use, um, I used to collect, I still do those crazy old purse handles, like back when you would, it was like really popular probably in the 70s when you would make your own purse and use these wooden handles. So I use those to hang weavings on. I also use sticks. Um, I think you saw a few slides back, a rolling pin, which is just crazy and weird, and I love it. Um, I've also had some work featured in um, some art shows. So some of these are a little bit larger pieces. So this one's about two feet by, I think, probably three and a half feet or so long, um, including the bottom tassel. So yeah, I used to have a lot of my work on display. Um, I since I've sold most of these pieces actually, which is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, I just kind of want to show you the different techniques you can use. Um, we're going to be doing a lot with this kind of thicker fiber that you see here. I find it to be really fun to work with. Um, as well as some of the um, bright colors is kind of my vibe. So that's what I provided most of you with. I'm sorry if you're into neutrals. Um, but this is a special piece to me. It was featured in a Parkland College alumni show. And it was, um, yeah, the curator of the show even called it out in the uh, show statement. So that was exciting for me. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces. It's the largest piece I've ever made. It's kind of hard to tell in these photos, but I think this one's about three and a half feet long and maybe about four feet tall. So pretty big. Hey, Laura. Yeah. How long did that piece take you, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, I probably worked on that piece, hmm, I'd say, 25 or more hours total. That's amazing. Some of the, yeah. <laughs> some of this, I mean, it'll, you'll see once you kind of start to work with it, um, you can complete pieces pretty quickly if you're using those thick fibers. It's using the thinner fibers that can, it, it'll really add some time. Um, but yeah, I, I started to work really organically and start to envision landscapes with a lot of my pieces. And ultimately, I like want my work to take you to a different place. I want you to look at it and not feel like you're, you're in a living room or in an art gallery or in a library, wherever. I want you to feel like you're being transformed into a totally different place, like something kind of imaginary and magical and Anyway, pop through here. This is one of my uh, favorite pieces as well. It was featured on uh, through 40 North's initiative to get artists work on MTD buses. Um, so yeah, that piece was really fun to create and it was just gonna throw it out there to toot my own horn a little bit. It was like runner up for a Boneyard signature image one year. So I gotta tell people that. Kind of a detail piece um, or a shot. Okay, so we're gonna go pretty um, basic as far as like I'm not gonna get into the history of weaving. If you're interested in that, you there are certainly resources out there. We have some here. We've got a lot of books on weaving actually now, um, but we're just gonna kind of go through some of the basics of weaving. I think a lot of people initially start thinking of the image on the right here, you think of a big crazy loom. So when we're thinking of weaving, we're thinking of kind of maybe like a more historic craft or a historic, um, wim more women focused um, career. And what we're going to be doing is a little bit more basic. And honestly, it's way dumbed down. I mean, this kind of machine, um, which is called a floor loom is super complicated. And you've got to have some mad skill to use it. So other types of looms are this one, um, kind of the video little gif at the top is, um, it's basically a smaller version of a floor loom and it just fits right on your tabletop. Um, I have used one of these before and honestly it takes so long to get it set up, like hours to get it set up, especially when you don't know what you're doing. 
um, that it would probably be beneficial if you were going to make like a scarf or a rug, but for making something smaller like this wall hanging like we're going to make today, not very helpful at all. Um, so you kind of need to know what kind of tools you need for the project that you want to work on. And what's cool about a frame loom, which is what we're going to be working on today, we're going to DIY one out of cardboard. You could also make one out of um, using just a frame, like an old picture frame and some nails, which I've done before. Um, but what we're going to do is use cardboard and kind of getting into just so you can kind of visualize what we're going to be doing to start is we're going to be working. I'm going to use these two terms throughout the class. So I thought it'd be helpful to give you a little visual. And if you forget, it's okay. I'm going to keep saying it, um, but we're going to create a warp. And a warp is going to be the bones of your weaving. So it's going to be kind of the structure underneath what your project is. Um, and the weft is going to be the actual fibers that you are weaving in and out of the warp. So that's what's going to be your actual wall hanging. Um, so the warp, you're not really going to see, but the weft is going to be what becomes your artwork. So. I'm going to keep using those terms and here just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm saying again, um, the weft is going to be the fibers, it's this dark color here that we're using, and then the um, warp on this image is the lighter color. So we're going to be warping our loom so that we can add the weft. So kind of fun words, warp, weft, weaver fever, a lot of W's. Okay. I'm going to pop back over to our project space here. Anybody have any questions so far? Do, do, do. I see someone said you should have an Etsy store. I, I do have an Etsy store, um, but I don't sell wall hangings anymore. However, I still have a lot for, I have a lot I should list. I used to do markets and festivals and I probably made hundreds of wall hangings. Um, and I do sell them occasionally to friends and family. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just get started. So I want everybody to pull out the cotton yarn. Set it aside if you haven't already. And I'm going to actually follow along with the instructions um, with you. I usually do that because otherwise I might jump ahead. Um, like I said, I haven't taught this class in a couple years, so I hope I don't get through anything, and if I do, you'll have to tell me. Second thing we're going to do is grab our cardboard. Like I said, you can use a larger, um, you can use a larger piece if you want, but I will not guarantee that you're even going to have enough fiber to make your work. So, keep that in mind. So, to start, what we need to do, I'll show you in this kind of finished one here, is we need to cut these slots so that we can start to get our work going. So we need to get our structure going. I usually do these anywhere between, you know, it's about half an inch apart. So this is where you could use a ruler if you want to be super exact. I'm just like, you. if any of you have attended a Crafty Adults before, I think you kind of know that's not my, that's not the way I roll, but I'm going to demonstrate. Here. So my piece of cardboard is like six and a half, I guess, so a little bit larger, and that's fine. You can take your scissors, just holding your ruler, and just give them a little snip every half inch or so. You don't need to be too nuts. Um, and I'm cutting, so you can see here, hold it up, maybe about a half inch down. You could cut a little bit more down. Doesn't need to be too too exact. Put this back around here. And I'm not going to use the ruler anymore. I've kind of got an idea. Okay. Now I'm going to flip it around to the other side on the bottom, and we're going to make the same cut. Now you do want to make sure. So you can kind of see here, I've got a little more space on this side than I do on this side. Totally fine, but I wouldn't want to flip my tape over or my sheet or cardboard over 
and start measuring exactly on the half inch over here because you will get kind of a wonky um, wall hanging. So just be mindful of that. You want it to be just about the same place as the uh, one above it. So again, I'm just kind of going to go for it. If you want to hold your ruler down and mark every half inch with a pen or a pencil, that would be wonderful. Trying to get our slots in here. And I am not paying attention to our chat too much. So if there's anything, anybody, questions or whatever, Trisha will relay them to me or, um, yeah. So far, we're pretty good, Laura. I think everybody's working. Okay, good. Getting their cardboard, so. All right. I want some of these to be a little bit deeper, I realized. So that's going to be our first step is just getting, this is what we're making into our loom. So I do want to show you, um, I have is a much, I don't know if I'll even be able to show it fully on here. But I do want to show you another DIY loom, um, just so you, you get an idea. So this is decent sized frame. And all um, that's happened here is my dad actually made this for me. Um, I've got the nails a little out of whack here now, but nails are just spaced out half an inch on the top and on the bottom. And this particular one, I've got little legs set up so that I can actually stand it up on a table and uh, work. You'll find um, <laughs> you're kind of hunched over sometimes when you're working on like this kind of project or like knitting or something. So it's nice to have something if you're interested that stands up. So you can make a, a frame loom with thrift store stuff. I mean, you can find an old frame and use some nails and make a, a, a frame loom really, really inexpensive. And in fact, if you want to keep weaving and you enjoy this, I would recommend doing that. Um, you'll see why later a frame loom is better than a cardboard loom, but the cardboard loom is basically free. All right, so I'm just going to get started warping. Again, if I move too quickly, let us know. I want to make sure we get through as much of this as we can. Okay, your cotton yarn. Super important that you use the cotton yarn. And here's why. Cotton yarn is sturdy. It's not going to rip. It's not going to break. If you're using an acrylic yarn, which is what all, all of these are, honestly, um, or a wool, the fibers are not as strong um, and they will break. So to make our warp, what we are going to do, start by taking your yarn and just letting it live in this first little notch here. You don't want to pull it too, too tight. I'm going to show you here. And we're just going to wrap it around into each of the slots on our loom. Let me give you an idea. This is harder virtually than it is in person, I will say. You don't want them to be so tight. You want them to have maybe a good little flop but you don't want it to be so tight that you can't stick your finger underneath this uh, thread here because we're going to end up adding all of our fibers in here. So it needs to have a little bit of wiggle room. It needs to have some room to grow. All right. And you're just wrapping around. If you bend some of your cardboard like I just did, doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be like so sturdy. And I don't, normally I get a lot of questions about how tight to make this. So don't overthink it. A little loose isn't going to be a problem, but too tight will be. So, uh, Laura, we do have yeah. a question. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the loop not needed? Uh, you know what? You can if you want. Um, it's not necessary with a cardboard loom necessarily because there's enough friction in between these two um, tabs that it's, I'm like pulling on it. It's not really going anywhere. If we were using a traditional frame loom, yes. And in the instructions, I do have that listed in case you're gonna be working on one later, um, you would wanna put a loop. 
We also had a question, um, is it going around both sides of the cardboard? And yes, as you'll see, Laura is going around, wrapping around the entire piece. Yes. Again, if we were doing a traditional frame loom, it'd be a little bit different. Um, let me warp this real quick and I'll show you, just so we've got it in our video here. We're warped. Okay, if I was using a frame loom like this, get my knot in here. You'll start, I'm just going to start, pick a random spot so the camera can see it a little bit better. And you pull it straight down all the way to the um, nail directly behind it, or below it, I mean. And then you're gonna go up. Again, kind of hard to demo since this loom is pretty big. But you wrap it around the nail. Does that make sense? So we don't have to wrap around anything with our cardboard loom. We can just wrap it, um, wrap it front and back. Okay. I'm going to give everybody a second to continue working, but I'm going to have you start to mentally think about your next step. So, on this weaving here, which I made out of um, when I was testing how much yarn to give you all, I had not anticipated, I like forgot that I was going to have to give you enough yarn to make a wall hanging. And normally, I've, I mean, I've never done a virtual class with weaving, so normally we all just like have a pile of yarn in front of us and have fun. So. Anyway, it was a little different. So, here's my wall hanging. I bought these beautiful tassels, but I've gotta have something for the tassels to hang on to. So, underneath all my tassels here, you can see I've got a few rows of plain weaving. And we are gonna get started with our plain weave. Now you can see in this project that you cannot see that at all tiny bit on the corner at the bottom. So don't be like too crazy about spending a lot of time thinking about what yarn you want to use. Pick one of these thin yarns that we've provided for you. Do not use a thicker yarn for this. Thin yarn. And you're going to cut about, I'm going to unwrap here, a little hard to demo. Hold your, um, hold the yarn in your um, arms and just hold a wingspan out. So from arm to arm and then just cut a piece. Okay, this is going to be your first row of plain weave. So, you're going to grab your tapestry needle and you're going to thread your needle. Laura? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, they had a question of can you cut the cotton yarn to do this first row? Yes, you certainly can. You just want to make sure you leave um, a, at least a couple, maybe at least an inch tail. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna get started with our first row of plain weave. So hopefully everyone's picked the color. And just to give you a general idea of what we're doing, we're gonna do four to five rows of just our plain weave, and we're gonna start as close to the bottom as we can. But again, we're not gonna be too like, too precise about it. I know that gives some people anxiety, but for me, it's like a little bit freeing. And Laura, just a reminder, the length of the first row weave, mm -hmm. was that an arm length, two arm lengths? Could you remind them? Yes, yeah, so I, I call it a wingspan. So if you take the yarn in one arm, I'm going to come back to you guys here. So if you grab your yarn in one hand and then pull it through the other one, so you've got a whole wingspan, and then just snip it right there. And that's how I, what I'm going to refer to wingspan of yarn throughout this tutorial, and that's what I mean. You want more than an arm's length, you want two arms. 
Thank you for that clarification. And, and just as a reminder, as Laura is, is working on this, um, if you are anxious or not feeling like you're able to keep up, you know, feel free to just watch along. And then once the video is ready, we'll send that to you and you can do it on your own schedule and at your pace that you're more comfortable with. Um, we wanna provide you the tools so that you can do this um, and, and, and continue to work on it and learn how to do things in the future too, so. Yeah, and thank you for mentioning that, Trisha, because I, I do think I do think a lot of you will get maybe about halfway done with your project just to set up the expectation for you. I don't anticipate everyone finishing this evening because you've never done this before. Um, it took me hours to make my first wall hanging. I was following a tutorial on the internet, and you know it, it's all something unless you have woven a little bit, and then you know maybe you'll have a little bit of a jump start, but. If you've never done something before, it's going to take a little time. It's going to take a little bit of time for you to even process some of the things I'm asking you to do because you don't know why you're doing them. So just keep that in mind um, as we're working. I'm trying to be as thorough as I can, but also move quickly so that you can see more of a finished um, product with this. Okay, so we're going to get started with our first row. And I don't know if anyone remembers doing any kind of weaving in like grade school. I did some where we wove with straws, which I've mentioned in many classes and almost no one has done that. So I'm sorry, I think I went to like a weird rural grade school, which I did. So weaving, super simple. Weaving is going over one of your warps and then under the one next to it. Over, under, over, under, over, under. That's what all you're going to be doing this entire time. Over, under, over, under. Now, the pattern in which you go over, under is kind of what's going to determine how your weaving looks. So you want to go over one, under the next. You're not going to go over two or over three or under, you know, two or three when we're doing these just regular old plain weaves. Um, so it's, pre it's pretty simple, but it does take some practice to get it, um, to get good at it, honestly. So I've got some in the instructions. I do have a little illustration for you, but we're going to start three rows from the left. Okay. So I'm going to start on one, two, three, and I'm going to the left. And you can just watch this. I encourage you to watch me do this before you attempt to, just so you kind of have an idea. We're going to go over, under, over. Okay, not too bad. Pull your thread all the way over here, leaving a little bit of a tail. All right, and then we're going to go back. Now we're going to go back this way. And we're going to see how we went over on this thread. So now we're going to go under, over, under, over, under. Just want you to get an idea here. All right. So I'm going to pull through. It's a little bit hard to do this while it's suspended, but over, under, over, under. So now I'm going to pull my thread kind of at this little diagonal until I get a nice, um, a nice little edge here. So I'm nice and close up to this. And then what I'm going to do, and it, this is going to seem insane and it's going to sound crazy because it's just an extra step. You're going to pull this down here now. And then what I like to do is use my fingers starting almost like a comb. And you're going to start, push it down all the way to the bottom. It's going to look loose. It's not going to look good. But what you are doing is setting yourself up for success for your future um, weaving. We're going to be using some really thick fibers in this project and you need to have the space um, for those fibers. Now if we weave really tight, our wall hanging is going to start to bow. It's not going to look as good. It's going to bow wherever you weave really tight, it's going to bow in. So you want to stick with this method where we're over, under, over, under. Set it 
down here so I can move a little faster. Knot it up here. And I pull it to the side. And I pull it down. And then I just kind of use your fingertips and comb it down. So the important thing is just to note wherever you on your board, if you go under the first one, you're going to go over on your next row. And that's what's going to hide these works. These are going to be basically invisible by the end of this. Over, under, over, under. Here's where I start to move pretty quick. And like I said, you're, you're not going to move as quick. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to. It feels weird. It feels wrong. It doesn't feel good to have these loose threads. Um, but I promise it will look good in the end if you take the extra time. So I'm going to keep weaving. I want you guys to give it a start. Um, see how it feels. If you have any questions, please let Trisha know. So far so good. One of the things too I, I wanted to point out is as a novice art person and crafty person, um, it may not, your finished project may not look exactly what you want it to look like. And that's okay too. Again, this is all learning. And um, once you have the basic skill set, then you can continue to practice and, and perfect things. Laura, like she said, she didn't do this overnight um, to make those amazing, amazing pro uh, projects that she did. So, you know, don't, don't beat yourself up if it's not going quite as you expect. What do you do with the extra cotton yarn after creating the warp? Do you cut off the extra cotton yarn after you've warped the board? Yes. All right, Laura says yes. Sometimes, Laura, I think you get a little far from the mic and it's just a little trouble hearing. I don't know, it's just in and out, just to give you a heads up. Hmm. That is interesting. Now you sound good. So See, I, I, okay, that's going to be something we'll, <laughs> we're going to have to table that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. I'm, I'm making notes as we go along. <laughs> no, no, that's, it's good to know because just so everyone knows, I'm like facing, I'm not facing the computer anymore, so that's why the mic's probably sounding a little bit different, so. Laura quite, has quite an amazing setup in her little uh, studio that she set up in there. Every time it looks a little more professional, you know, <laughs> we're building. We, we are building and we are adapting to the virtual world. That is for sure. Okay, so I, I am, um, j just so, so we, I could show you. You can see I'm kind of done. I'm kind of getting to the end of this yarn here. What I'm going to do, because we, this piece isn't going to be, this part isn't going to be seen, I'm going to weave it in couple. That's good enough. And just kind of tuck it down in here. So the reason I have you start a couple uh, of these warps in from this side is actually because otherwise you end up with all these little loose tails kind of coming from the side. And it can be fixed. You can basically you just weave them in through the back when you're done. But um, it takes a lot of extra time and it's annoying, so I like to just tuck my tails kind of behind inside more of the inside of the weaving. It's just a little bit easier in the end um, to kind of clear off and just look really nice. We so, have a question. Yeah. Uh, how many rows should we do with uh, this? And it looks like you did about, what, three or four? And yes, just, uh, exactly. Three or four is, um, I would say, exactly right. One is not enough and five is probably about two, you know, just about too many. So what I love about this project is there no perfectionism needed. Absolutely not. Okay, so we've got some plain weave. That looks good. We're, do we're doing it. We're making it happen. But we want to make some beautiful tassels here. So Castles are going to take up a bit of your yarn. It is likely that I have a little bit less in my uh, little kit that I made myself that you guys do. So 
just note that if you have one of these nice little bundles, it might do two or three tassels, but it won't do, um, we won't do five. I'm going to look and see here how many tassels I'm going to make here. So for every two warps, we're going to make one tassel. So one, two, three, four, five. And I have an extra boy over here. So that's okay. I'll show you how we can kind of mask it in our in our wall hanging. So no worries. If you have an even number of warps, that's great. Um, but it's no problem if you end up with an odd number like I have here. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move kind of quick. I'm a little nervous about having enough time to show you all of the um, steps. So bear with me. I also have a second piece of cardboard, which I uh, did say in the instructions to have. If you don't, it's okay. Um, you can use this piece that you have. Um, what we're going to be doing is making tassels. Some of you might have made tassels before, um, but here's the way that I teach it. It's actually not how I usually do it because it's a, I have a little bit of a faster method, but it's kind of hard to show on camera. So this is a little bit more of a basic approach. Your cardboard is, represents the length of your tassel. So on your wall hanging, Kind of take a, a, a look and see if you want it to be shorter tassels or you want some longer tassels. Leave it up to you. I'm going to do shorter tassels. I actually normally do really long tassels, but I don't want to get too crazy here. So tassels, they're called Raya knots. If you've done any macrame, they're very similar to a lark's head knot. I kind of think they're basically the same thing. And they're also not really knots, so that's fun. Um, so what you're going to do to get your tassel created, so you're going to grab your cardboard, and you're going to pinch the yarn with your thumb, and we're going to wrap it around the cardboard. Again, we don't need to get too hung up about how tight this is. We're going to cut it off the cardboard. And I'd recommend that you don't do it that tight. It'll make it a little bit easier for you. Now, let me look and see what I said to do how many per tassel. I think it was seven to 10. Let me look. I said eight to 10. So we're gonna wrap it around. I'm gonna show you one first and then we're gonna kind of let loose a little bit. So. I wrapped it around four times. Five, six, seven, eight. And that's gonna be one tassel for me. So to create the one tassel, I'm going to cut away from my larger um, stash of yarn here. And then I'm gonna casually just slip this off the cardboard. And you'll see shirts down quite a bit. So keep that in mind. You're pulling it taut on the cardboard so it's going to stretch that yarn a little bit. And then what you're going to do is you have this kind of little loop, right? So we're going to cut the loop. Just like that. You could cut it when it's still on the cardboard um, and th that would be fine. It's probably a little bit simpler. To do it but just for the video purposes I do want to show you you can take it off the cardboard. Now I've got my first tassel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to put this one right over here on the left. What I'm going to do is take it again I've got it illustrated too so you can refer back to it if needed. Um, I'm going to take it I want to kind of spread it out and then I'm going to take my two fingers underneath and I'm going to grab the right side of the tassel and just kind of casually tuck it under the right side of the work of the two that I pulled out. All right, so you can kind of see here, I'm just kind of wrapping it around. I'll do the same thing on the left side. All right, you can kind of see it's a little uneven. I 
out like that. So I'm going to pull it. It's very easy to manipulate when you do it this way. Just kind of grab them so the ends are at the same length. And then I'm just going to pull it tight and just kind of pull it down. I'm going to show you how not to do it first here. Don't pull it so tight that we start to get this bow. Um, it's not going to work later on. So just if you do pull it pretty tight, you can just kind of pinch it. And loosen it up a little bit. And now I've got my first tassel. Pretty easy. Doesn't, I mean, you don't have to have any yarn skills to do this, I don't think. Um, it does take a little practice to get everything manipulated and nice and exactly how you want it. But that's your first tassel. I'm going to move pretty quick and get through the next tassels here. Lisa, we are going to run through a few of the tassels. So yeah, just follow along. Yeah, for sure. All right, so again, for your tassel, decide how long you want it. You use your cardboard, hold it with your finger, and wrap around. Now, what I am going to do is you can, um, I found that between 8 and 10 is like a good, a nice thickness for your tassels. You could do thinner, you could do really thick, but for this purpose, I encourage you to do no more than 10. So wrap around. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, and I've got a knot, eight. I usually wrap up all of them at once instead of doing individual just for time's sake. It's way faster. Um, but I am going to kind of do them in little chunks so that you can, so I can see how many tassels I've made and I will have to count the threads at the end. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not going to get another tassel out of this, so I'm going to see I don't have a bunch of thread left. So I'm just going to cut it. Now I'm going to cut these. I'll show you how to cut them on the cardboard. Just kind of got to keep a hold of them is the only thing, otherwise they tend to kind of jump out. And how to place them on your wall hanging. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do it right next to, right next door here. I'm going to lay it over. I'm going to grab two of my warps here. Those are the two I'm working with. And then I'm going to tuck the right side under the right. And I'm going to tuck the left side under the left of my pair. So, Again, they're pretty uneven, no problem. I just kind of pull them together until the bases, see here, are fairly, fairly even. Pull it down. And those look pretty good. So now I'm going to grab this one here, right under right, left under left, pull down. So I only have two more tassels left to do. So I'm going to, I think I'm just gonna use this green here. So I only need, uh, how many do I need? 16. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna move over to the other side here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that should be eight for both of my tassels. And again, I know it, it seems it might seem overwhelming, and that's totally okay. You are going to have access to this video basically forever. All right, moving quick with this. Pull down. Make it look really easy. It is not. Okay, so here's for all of us who have our kind of oddball, where you've got three 
it's the same exact thing, but we're just going to leave this warp in the middle. So we're going to lay our tassel over. We're going to go pull the right side over. We're going to pull the left side. Mess that one up. See? Pull it just like that, and we're going to leave our center one right here, and it's all good. Pull it down. Once it's done, you really won't be able to tell the difference. And just to clarify, that's if you had an odd number um, to make up that difference. Yes. You can see me kind of like brushing everything down. That's just to kind of get everything nice and tight, looks good. So now I'm going to do another few rows of plain weave. It's important that we do plain weave and it's important that we do just our regular kind of thinner yarn. What we need is to lock these in. We don't want these going anywhere. So I'm actually just going to use, this isn't quite a wing stand, it's really just an arm stand of this one, but I want to use it up. I'm going to put my tapestry needle on. I've lost it. While you're looking for that, Re had a great idea of just undoing one of the warps so that they didn't have an odd number. Brilliant. Yeah, that's fine too. Ooh, I've lost my tapestry needle. How does this happen? It's like a, an I spy situation. I wonder if you all see it and I can't. <laughs> If I only knew what you were looking for, Laura, I could perhaps help. The needle. Ah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do plain weave. So I'm going to speed through plain weave here real quick. Again, you're going to thread your tapestry needle, which can be honestly really annoying. <laughs> Just like a regular needle and thread, it always seems like so close. Okay. Again, got my loom here. I'm going to start over here. I'm going to go under, over, under. I'm going to pull through, leaving just a little bit of a tail. And I'm going to tuck that tail kind of just behind. When you're using a frame loom where the back is exposed, this part is a lot easier because you just let it be. You don't need to actually worry about like pulling it through. You see here now it's kind of hidden. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. There are some super neat things you can do. You can see here I pulled a little too tight and now I'm kind of starting to bow on the side. Super easy. Just pull it back a little bit. Make my little arc, push it down, and then go back the other direction. Um, they make some neat little tools that you can use, and you can also recreate using just um, just using a ruler. So a lot of the table looms or the um, floor looms have a nice handy little feature where you can flip up a board and half of the warp stand up. So then what you're doing, if you watch some weaving videos, they're just tossing back and forth, under, over, under, over, um, because the machine is lifting the warps. They throw their, um, their needle, so to speak, underneath. They hit a pedal and then it flips and then they throw the other one. So that's how people are able, to, that's why those machines are awesome for great uh, large scale pieces, but something like this we don't necessarily need. But what you can do instead, which I'm going to demonstrate here, is you could weave a ruler under, over, under, over. This is called a shed stick. That's the term. This is just a fun little tip. You don't need to do this at all. Under, over, under, over. Well, now I can just flip it up and make it a lot easier. You can see I've kind of raised those warps. 
So I do that in a lot of my bigger pieces. Um, it doesn't make as much sense with a smaller piece because it gets so tight here once you get those bigger fibers in. So it's not quite as effective. Um, however, if you want to try it right now, just to give you, um, just to, you know, try a different technique, go for it. It's really nice. Okay. So you can see I'm also pulling a little bit too much here. So I'm just going to kind of undo it. There we go. And I'm going to go back. All right. I'm going to show you what a common weaving mistake is now. So what I see a lot of people doing, it sounds really basic, but it makes a big difference is missing a warp, so going over two, let's say, and under one. Well, let's say you were heading back over here, and then you did it the correct way on the way back the other direction. Ooh, now we're like off balance here. Look at that. It's not going to look good. Because now you can see your warps. They're kind of shining through. So it can be annoying if you're a knitter and you drop a stitch and then like four rows later you realize it's like devastating. Um, that's kind of what it feels like here. Sometimes it's pretty indetectable that you've actually, you know, gone over one. So just keep that in mind. It's very easy to have happen. It doesn't look recognizable until you're going back the other direction. Then you kind of see what's happened. So super easy to take out. You just you just go back the way you came. So I'm going to just show you how you take a row out. What if I want to go all the way back? Just go back the way you came and now you're kind of back at the beginning of the row. Okay, again I'm just going to go until I have like almost no yarn left and just take a little tail pull out my needle here and then just tuck in the back. So I did the three rows, so not too many, but just enough to kind of lock in our tassels here. Press it down and there you go. You've got a nice little couple rows of plain weave. I want to pop through now and show you what to do with the larger fibers. We're going to use the larger fibers for the primarily for like as much of this wall hanging as we can right now, just to give you an idea. So I'm actually, I'm going to use this one because I think it'll be a little bit more clear on camera. So I'm going to have you unravel your roving. This is what this is called. Um, so roving is the fibers before they are spun into yarn. There are these nice, thick, little, super soft, fluffy pieces. So most of you um, have several different colors, so you'll, you'll all will have different um, colored roving. And this kind in particular is from Michaels. But I do want to show you my favorite roving. This I get at Close Knit in Urbana. Um, it's Malabrigo. And it is absolutely gorgeous. You can pull it apart, and it's got all these different colors in here. And it's just, it's wonderful. <laughs> So if you want to experiment with some different rovings, it's all hand dyed. It's just like gorgeous. That's my jam. But we're going to use this for today. And I like to, it's like way more fun to pass it around for you to see, but I do like to show just the different textures and techniques that you can get with using different types of fibers. So I'm going to start. We're not going to use a tapestry needle to do the roving. We are just going to use our hands. So again, I'm going to start a few rows in, just kind of stuck, and then I'm going to just weave this whole thing through. I think I just kind of want to see how it, how it looks, how it works. Now with this roving, we're going to do something a little bit different. Now that you know how to plain weave, we're going to plain weave with the roving, but we're going to go over two, under one. So I'm going to go over two, 
under one and then pull through. And the reason we're going to do that is because this is thicker. And we're at the end, we're going to loop around, we're going to pull through. Kind of tuck it down. You see how much space this already takes up in our wall hanging? Okay, again, and now I'm going to go over two, under one. You could separate these two if you'd like and just kind of extend your roving and actually be a little bit more specific with the colors. That's fine. Um, it's all it's whatever is in your heart. We're going to go over two, under one, pull through. All right. Over two, under one. And Laura, I see you're you're continually continually brushing down the tassels to make sure those don't get pulled into your weave. Correct. And I just like constantly am like brushing down um, my fibers just to make sure everything's nice and and um, not tight necessarily, but just like together. So same thing, I'm going to go under, pull through, and then I'm going to go over two, under one. Now you can, of course, continue doing um, a plain weave with uh, thinner fiber. Uh, just for the purposes of this, I am going to be demoing with the thicker fiber. A, it's a lot easier to see on camera. B, it's going to fill up a little bit faster, and C, it's, it's fun, it's soft, I love it. So I think it's kind of becoming a little bit more clear what I'm doing here, over, under, over, under. Now, I want to show you with... This one here, I ended up doing several different things here. So exactly what I'm demonstrating right now. We did tassels. We did our plain weave, which this one is the same color as the tassels, so it's a little bit hard to differentiate. And then I'm doing a couple rows of this thicker fiber. And then I decided I wanted a little texture, so I did some more tassels up top. So we can choose to add more tassels. You can choose not to add more tassels. I've done lots of different um, funky things with weaving. Here's like a little a baby weaving where I chose to just do some of these crazy little tassels up top. I've also done wall hangings using um, unique fibers such as this one's like a velvet chenille yarn. It tangles very easily, but is very, um, it's got like a nice sheen to it. Also used things like rope. So I have had so much fun going to the idea store and finding crazy, weird little fibers to weave. You don't have to just use traditional yarn. You can weave with straws. You can weave with rope. You can, um, use roving, you can use yarn, you can use ribbon. There's so many different things that you can, like fibers you can incorporate. So you kind of have to dream big um, and just have an open mind. There's a lot of different things you can use. And I'm gonna... A couple more just to show you too. So a lot of people ask if you can make patterns with your weavings, definitely. I have even spelled out words in wall hangings before. Um, it's not my favorite look, but it can be done. So I have linked several, I think a couple tutorials in your handouts. Um, so there are some, some other weavers you can check out. There are tutorials. I, uh, once we upload these to YouTube, I'm going to have the handouts available um, for you to download. So that you'd be able to actually click the links 
and see the tutorials that I used when I first started weaving. So you can make designs, you can make shapes, you can really have fun. Um, I tend to start with the organic just to kind of give you an idea of what to do and then maybe move towards shapes. Um, but that's just kind of my style. So on Laura, just to give you a check-in too, it's about 8.06, 8.05. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna just keep weaving until I get to the end of this, just to give you guys a little time here. So how's everybody, how's everybody doing? Check in with us and tell us, tell, tell us how you are. I say this like every time, but I miss being able to like make eye contact with people and <laughs> like see your progress. Somebody uses, <laughs> Ree's using one of my favorite words. Um, my tassels seem a bit wonky. Like in, <laughs> wonky is a fabulous word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like in like length, they seem wonky or, um, so sometimes I, I wonder if by wonky you mean like there's something kind of funky going on with this part or do we mean like they're super, the length is messed up. I don't have updates yet. Um, we also have Carolyn who uh, got way behind in the tassels and I, again, Carolyn, it is quite okay. Um, cut yourself a little bit of slack. I, I have to say that if I was doing this project, I would totally have a panic attack. Um, the top part, yeah. Reese says, the top part seems not to lay down nicely. Okay. That could be because, let's see here. How do I describe this? Um, it could be that you're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something kind of weird. I'm going to push my weaving back. And she does say the knot. She clarified the knot of the tassels, not laying down nicely. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you here. I'm going to take this one out. I'm living on the edge. I was going to so, say, that made me panic. You're just doing that. <laughs> so make sure if your knot's not laying um, nicely, it's probably because your fibers are all kind of bunched up. So if you want to clean it up a little bit, you can, you can take the tassel out. A right and knot is not really a knot. I mean, like, you've tied them. They're not knots. That's why you have to put that plain weave in there to lock it in so it doesn't go anywhere unless you take it out like I just did. Lay them flat on your finger so that you can see. See like how this one's curling over? It's, I mean, this is getting pretty nitpicky, but this is how to fix that problem. So they're all nice and flat. Take that nice flat tassel, I'm doing this upside down. Lay it out pretty flat. And do that same thing, but you're just being a little bit more mindful of how your fibers are laid out here. So that way before pulling tight, you can also just kind of zhuzh them a little bit. Also another favorite word that I enjoy very much. <laughs> you can see here, like, I, it, it's hard to explain exactly what I'm doing sometimes, but like zhuzhing is it. I'm pulling it down, then I'm kind of like messing with this top and pinching it and moving it around and then pulling it back down again. So it, it takes some time, it takes some practice, it takes just like moving through the steps to understand what you might change about how you're doing it for the next time. So keep that in mind. So we're going to keep weaving and then at 8.15, so about five minutes, I am going to actually move over to my finished piece here because I want to show you how to take it off the loom. Um, that part is scary and I really don't want anyone to leave this tutorial thinking like they have to keep their wall hanging on the cardboard loom because they're too scared to take it off. The rest of this, like it sounds insane, but you can do following the instructions. You are just going to be going over and under your work fibers. Um, I did not mention this right up top because I thought it might scare some people. But in the past when I teach this class, it's usually about three hours. 
So from the time of gathering your fibers, picking your colors, learning about warping a loom, learning about how to actually manipulate the yarn to create what you want, it takes about three hours to teach. So we're doing this a little bit you know, differently since it's virtual and we wanna keep it in our, our block of time that works well for us, um, which is why I'm moving fast and that's why I've got a finished one ready to show you the last steps. So no one feel bad if you are not finishing this because honestly that wasn't the intent for this class. Some we want you to leave with a finished product and some I want you to have the skills to finish it on your own. And she says, thanks for the tassel demo. They are slightly less wonky now. So that's excellent to hear. Yay! <laughs> well, and again, you're right. You're teaching the basic skills. Um, what the video uh, recording webinar will allow you to do is to pause, to get caught up. And, um, you know, perhaps, you know, if you want to go out and in, or order online some um, yarn, she's given you what you need. You can, you know, practice several of these process, projects um, and with each time you'll be improving. Yes, yes, definitely. So I want to move and show you now, you, as you can see here, you can use the thicker fibers to do stripes. You can have it be a little more organic, like this one with the rope. This whole thing is, is using thicker fibers. So if you're using your roving, it's not going to take you that long to make a wall hanging. Now, for the roving that you all have, it's definitely going to be a little bit smaller, but that's okay. If you want it to just be roving, it, that's on you. It's great. Um, I'm going to demo with a thicker fiber here. So you all should have had kind of like a little variety pack of these yarns, basically. I want to show you how it works with a thicker yarn. Again, thread it through. Um, and I, and I didn't say it out loud, but to fin finish the roving, I wove until the end, and then I tucked it under. And there you go, now it's hidden. All right, I'm gonna again just cut about a wingspan of yarn. The reason I, I always say wingspan is because an arm's length is too short. And anything more than a wingspan, then you're going to get your yarn knotting. It's just going to happen. Now, they make these fancy, fun tools that I use on larger pieces where you wrap the yarn around, and this is your needle. And that way, you can work with a much larger chunk of yarn and do a long, seamless stripe or whatever you're doing without knotting. So these are really handy. I'm trying also, to think I'm blanking on the name. I don't know what those are called too, but I've seen those. I would also suggest if you're Michael Phelps, you don't use a wingspan to measure your yarn. <laughs> yeah. In case anybody wanted to know some useless trivia, his wingspan is six feet, seven inches. That's insane. Yeah. I feel like my lighting just kind of changed. So I'm sorry right. about that. I don't I don't know what happened. It did a anyway, little. Whatever. We can, there it goes. We can see again. It like got kind of dark for a second. Okay. So again, anytime you use a thicker fiber, like the roving or rope, you want to lock it in. So we're going to lock it in with a thicker yarn, but we're going to actually weave under one, over one, under one, over one. And that's going to get it nice and locked in here. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under. You can see here, I just want to show you, that I'm going under one that I went under the last time. And I actually don't want to do that on the side. It's going to bother me. So I am kind of a perfectionist about some things like that. So I'm actually going to weave from the back here just to make sure I've got my yarn where I want it. Perfect. Plain weave. We're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. 
I use my other hand to kind of pull through when I'm working flat like this, and that seems to work well. And you pull at an angle, pull it down and make an arc. Why is the lighting doing weird things? And kind of tuck under. You're not going to see the first couple rows after you use a thicker fiber. They're going to kind of be hidden. And that's okay. Again, this is just super basic weaving. We're not getting into anything too crazy. I actually was looking at my house to see if I could find, I have my first wall hanging that I made um, and I made it out of scraps of yarn and the colors were not very good and it looks not great. And I actually loved making it so much that I stayed up like late and finished it. And then I basically got to this point, cut it off and went, yeah, I'm going to love doing this. And I am not even going to bother finishing it. And I'm just going to get some good yarn and start the next one. So I have it hanging up with a clothespin wherever it is. One, how amazing from where you started to where you've come. Yeah, it, Honestly, it was a, I always joke, but I am serious, that weaving was a craft that like kind of saved my life in some weird ways. I was an art major in college and I like didn't really fit into like the art crowd. I like didn't know what to focus on and what I wanted to do. And uh, a few years later I found weaving and I just like started a weird business selling it and teaching it and it was really fun. And yeah, it saved my life. So. Well, and I think right now, especially, there's such a desire for macrame, weaving, and a lot of those um, crafts that have been around for a while, and people are very much interested in picking those up. Yeah, they're like kind of, they're like trendy a little bit now. It's exciting. Like, I think the 70s in general, like everything from the 70s is like coming back a little bit, <laughs> including the crafts. Um, and honestly, weaving is, it is therapeutic for me. It, if you like yarn crafts, if you're like not a yarn person, you might not enjoy it as much. But if you're a crocheter or a knitter um, and you, you know, you already kind of have a little bit of a handle on yarn, you might really like weaving. It's not, it's, it's, you can just be so creative with it and you can make gifts for people. You can make stuff pretty quick. Like I, oh, I didn't bring them in here. I have coasters that I made. Um, I have, it's seen better days, but I made a pillow out of the wall hanging. Um, you can see I like actually use this pillow. <laughs> But you can make all sorts of stuff. You don't just have to make a wall hanging. You can make, you, you know, pillows. You can make bags. You can make rugs. So it's got a lot of potential. But I'm going to get through this row, and then I'm going to actually show you. So this will be a demo for you all. You, you absolutely, if you're already ready to cut your wall hanging off your loom, um, you must be like a robot. So let's say I was satisfied with how, oh, I just came back. Um, let's say I was satisfied with how my wall hanging had progressed and I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm ready to cut it off the loom and make it into a hanging piece. Here's what you're gonna do. Flip it over. It's gonna be so scary. You're gonna take your scissors and you're going to cut it right down the back, right down the middle. I love how aggressive you are with doing this. Yeah, it's just like rip it off. Okay, now this is like the scary part. You're just going to casually, again, pull these warp threads away out of the notches. I like to do one side at a time. I think it makes it a little less scary. 
Um, so I'm going to reveal to you the back of this wall hanging. Doesn't look great. A lot of loose ends. Typically, I would tell you to go ahead and tie all the loose ends up first. So what I would do is find like these two loose ends are near each other and just tie them in a little knot. You're going to just do a little double knot. Super easy. Done. Trim the excess so it's just like a tiny little tail. And that's what you do. For my demo purpose, I'm actually going to do the second step first, which I know is annoying, but... Laura, just real quick. Carolyn had a question. Um, yeah. Did you say that you had taken the thicker yarns apart? So I know when you showed those uh, yarns, you were kind of pulling them apart. And you, I recall that you said you could or you didn't have to. You, you can. It is not necessary at all. Um, let me pull this one through here. So you could separate them out because they are just kind of like twisted together. These particular yarns, not every yarn, you know, will be like this, all the roving, but you could just work with the white and then just do some of the like red and purple or whatever colors you have. The, this kind of like more tie dye one, which I didn't realize I had some left of this. Um, it doesn't have that, like the colors are pretty similar. The variation isn't quite as extreme. But you can separate it and then you would have kind of like two different pieces of roving to work with. Well, and I, and I would think that one that went off to your right, the one uh, that you got locally, to pull that apart would be very challenging because that's a, just a, a different type almost. Yeah, so what's interesting just to show you too is say I wanted to work with this piece. I just want like one stripe of this. Cut it. A, it's like so satisfying just to like see what's inside. And this one, it pulls apart real easy. It's almost like pulling apart a cotton ball. And that's, I mean, this, this stuff is just so fun because you almost like never know what's going to be on the inside of it. So you get a lot of different colors. It's not as, um, it's strong, but it's not, it's hard to explain. This, I mean, this is wool, I believe, and this is acrylic. All right, but we're going to, I'm going to rein everybody back in here because we've only got, we really don't have that much longer. It's almost 830 right now, but I want to show you how to take your weaving off the loom because I fear that you all, I, I trust that you have ambition with your wall hangings, but it's just scary to, to do and I don't want you all to feel like you're in the dark about that. So typically when you're working with a frame loom, the back is open the whole time. So you're actually able to tie off the back as you go, which is what I recommend doing. Um, but with a cardboard loom, that's not an option. And so you'll have to uh, do that step at the end. It is important that you add the knots in because that'll secure everything. It's not like macrame, if you've done macrame, where you're actually making knots. We're just, we're weaving, we're not making knots. So it's important that you tie it up. Um, with the roving, you actually don't need to tie that. You can just kind of tuck it in to one of the warps. I'm kind of show you here. Just tuck it in. That'll just make it so it doesn't flop out the side or do anything um, wonky. It'll also make it so it hangs nicely um, uh, against the wall. But what we're going to be focusing on right now isn't the back. We're going to focus on actually securing our warps here. So obviously, now that we've cut it, the yarn can just fall right off. So it's important that we secure it. I will usually kind of pull down so everything's nice and tight. I'm going to just do a double knot right here. Nope. I don't know why, but every time I do a project where I have to do a knot, I fail at it immediately on camera. I'm pretty good at tying knots. Okay, double knot. And same thing, I'm going to pull the next two warps. We're going to kind of tuck it down. 
If you have a longer tail like this, I like to do an overhand knot, so just, just like this. Make a loop, put the tail through the loop, and then use your hands to guide the knot down. That's my preferred knot for a wall hanging, so I'm going to continue like this. And it's really just because the threads hang nicely, whereas these kind of splay out and it's a little bit frustrating. Overhand knot, pull through, slide down. Not too hard. Got to be careful. You can see I've got one trying to escape one of my stitches, so I want to keep that down. Take your two, overhand knot, slide it down. So if you have your uneven three, like I do. Same thing as we kind of did before. We're just going to ignore that middle piece. We're going to do an overhand knot. And we're going to slide it down. We just wanted to comment that this part is not too hard. <laughs> Rhee, I think we like need to hire you as our like resident crafty adults participant who just contributes excellent things to the chat. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. <laughs> and while, while Laura's doing that real quick too, you know, be sure to take pictures of your finished project or the progress and, and tag the library on um, any of our social media. Um, we'd love to see that. Yes. And um, I don't think a lot of times with these, we've been asking if people want to share video and show the, their project with us. I don't think we're not going to do that this time. A, because of time, and B, just because I, I don't think any of you has a finished product to share, which is totally fine. Um, but I do want to mention that we won't be doing that this time. Um, so if you have pictures, we'd love to get them. Lisa, if, if Lisa does have a finished project because she's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just, I put the email info at champagne.org in there because if you don't feel comfortable sharing or tagging us in social media, but you'd like to share your picture either with Laura or you would like us to post it on ours, um, you know, send us an email there at info at champagne.org. Yes. Okay. So we're going to pretend for the, the purposes of this video but I have also put knots in at the bottom and I have taken this 100% off the loom, okay? Um, I, I wanna show you how to stitch it onto um, your dowel rod. So that's where I'm gonna go next. If you know how to sew, fairly easy. Pull your wall hanging so it's backwards. We wanna look at the bad side right now. And we're gonna grab our dowel rod I included a dowel rod in everyone's package. Um, they're really thin, so they're very easy to cut just with scissors. Um, I mean, it will be a little bit um, rough, so you do want to be careful. Like, I wouldn't hand this to a small child. Um, if you have sandpaper, you could sand it down. I'm not going to be concerned about it. It's just going to hang on the wall. So, think about how lovely this is going to look hanging on my nice little dowel rod. So we're going to flip it over and we are going to take some thread, whatever color you want. I've got some blue here, so I'm going to use blue and I'm going to cut my wingspan of yarn. Perfect. Now I'm going to take my tapestry needle. We're going to thread it. And all we're going to do is we're going to be stitching the wall hanging to the dowel rod. So I will usually, let's see here, start by kind of tucking the warp back here. Honestly, I usually take a tapestry needle and thread these down the back to hide them. Let's see if I have an example. Yes, on this one. So I just take it, put each warp on a tapestry needle and, and tuck it behind two of the wall or two of the weft threads here. 
I don't think it's totally necessary, so I'm not going to demo it. What you're going to do is just put your needle through maybe like two rows or so and pull it so you have a little tail. And then we're going to tie knot, double knot. Love that. And now I've lost my dowel rod. Luckily, I oh I have it in my lap. Okay. Again, it the camera angle is going to make this a little challenging, but I'm going to try. See how I'm kind of holding it on, and I'm just going to be wrapping around and stitching. Go through. Hold tight, and now I'm kind of just uh, I'm sewing. I'm literally just sewing this while hanging onto the dowel. Pull down. And I think like this, like this, and the rest of the project. So much of this you can customize to however you want it to appear. Yes. Yeah, I think that's that is like an excellent point. Is you also don't even have to. Um, I mean, you don't have to hang it on anything. You could just, I mean, you could hang it on a dowel, you could hang it on a stick, you can do what I did with my first project and just hang it up using a clothespin, which is kind of insane, but it worked. It is a little bit of, I mean, it does. It takes some experience and it takes some practice to make it, you know, it, it, I will say I think I'm making it look fairly easy to do some of this, but it takes a little bit of practice, especially if you've never sewn before, um, just to kind of get a, a handle, a handle on this. So again, we're just stitching it. I kind of messed something up here, but you know what? I'm gonna, I'm not gonna leave it. Let's see. Nope. I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo this one. So I'm gonna show you. I'm just going to pull out and then re-thread. I don't know what I did. I kind of caught it somewhere. The nice thing with yarn projects, or at least what I think is, you know, you can always take things out or rip things out and, and do it again or restart if you're not happy with it, you know. I can recall my great grandmother ripping out rows of her crocheting and then redoing. Yes, definitely. And I messed this up again somehow, so that'll be interesting for me to go back and look and see what I did, but I'm just leaving it. Stitching. Stitching. I just want to get to the end so I can show you. We're at 833 right now. So, I don't, kind of got caught up back here, but anyway, you've got it all stitched. I'm going to do one more kind of last one because I really want to hide that knot. Okay. So, once you have gotten your whole thing, Stitch to your dowel rod, flip it over, and I'm going to undo my knot or my uh, thread here. And I'm actually just going to tie it in a knot, but I'm going to tie it with one of the warp threads I have here. So I'm just going to do a double knot, tie it extra tight, extra tight, and then I'm just going to trim. Again, pretending as though I have knotted this, uh, uh, you know, from the cardboard already, pretending I did all of that the correct way, I now have my wall hanging, but I need to make a little hanger so that we can actually hang it on the wall. So what I'm going to do is just take a, a piece of yarn. I usually start with like a longer piece just to start so I can customize it as needed. I'm going to do a knot. 
I'm gonna do a double knot. And then I'm just gonna kind of visualize if I was hanging it on a wall. How's that? It looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna wrap around like this and we're just gonna do another double knot. Honestly, that's how I do it a lot so I don't have to, um, I don't like wasting yarn. So this is an easy way to make sure I get it exactly the length I want. Trim it up, trim it up. And my last step is gonna be, let's go ahead and clear my space off just so you can see here. I kind of like my fibers, my tassels to be nice and loose. But you can do really fun stuff with angles. So you could take your scissors and say, I kind of want it to be maybe more like this, or maybe I want it to kind of taper down in the middle. You can do that. So I'm just gonna use my cardboard as a little guide here. I'm gonna hack off some of my tassels just so I get that nice semi straight angled line here. Just like that. Pretty good. And I'm going to just kind of round it off. This is optional, but it's kind of crazy. Sometimes it transforms the way your piece looks when you take the time to trim the bottom. And you can do it like I'm doing now, where it's just flat on the table, or you can actually hang it up on a wall just to kind of see exactly where everything is going to hang. I am satisfied with how this looks, and I could pick it up, and now I've got my wall hanging. I could just walk over and hang it on a nail right now, and I would be done. So. That is how to make a woven wall hanging. Super basic, um, super basic weaving techniques here. Again, you have complete instructions. These are all um, things I've illustrated for you that have these details on how to finish your wall hanging. So you don't need to be um, panicked if you didn't get to this point. You have everything you need to complete your woven wall hanging. Um, something I want to mention too real quick before um, we end is that this is a great project for scraps. So if you have a lot of, like if you are a knitter or a crocheter, you have a lot of scraps, this project is so great because you can use, I mean you could use anything and it would, I mean, it would look good. You can see how, like, even in the one that I was working on, I didn't use that much yarn here to make this pretty decent sized stripe. So it's a great project for all those, like, tiny little skeins. You have, like, hardly anything left, and you're like, I don't want to throw it away. It was really expensive, and it was really pretty, but what do I do with it? I can't make anything out of it. You can weave with it. So weaving can be a pretty inexpensive hobby to pick up, especially if you already have a lot of yarn at home. So I'm kind of looking, anybody have any questions? I know it was kind of speed round at the end, but. Uh, I think we, we kept up with most of the questions along the way. Um, and again, I think uh, we definitely are emphasizing, you know, watch the video, pause it as needed, do it on your own time. And so you feel comfortable and confident with it. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Laura. Um, sh the wonderful handouts that she created for you um, she drew the graphics and the images because she's just that good. Um, so I just wanted to brag on her a little bit because uh, quite frankly, I'm amazed with the, her artistry and what she can do. Um, because as I said, I would have had a panic attack if I was trying to do any of that. I'm not artsy <laughs> by any means. Um, so I, I thank you guys for joining us. Um, and uh, I wanted to share we have this book here and I recommend checking it out. This is the the woman whose tutorial I first used. She actually ended up writing a book about weaving and it's an excellent book. Her tutorials are like fantastic. They're so well done. So if you're looking for like inspiration for different kinds of projects to do, 
um, DIY woven wall art by Rachel Denbo. Um, I believe that right now it's in a, like, um, on our catalog. I think we have it highlighted. So yeah. you should be able to see some weaving stuff there too. And, and to that, um, you know, we are closed to the public, but we, we are doing curbside. So if you are not familiar with how to search our catalog, give us a call, shoot us an email. We can guide you through, we can teach you how to do that, or we can do it for you. You know, that's what we're here for. So we can make those requests for you. Definitely. Cool. Thank you so much, Trisha. And thank you guys for joining us. Um, I, I really like, I love getting together with you guys every month and making something. So I really appreciate all of you um, joining us today and taking time out of your busy lives and schedules and days to just like unwind for. Yeah. And, and do an share your and pictures. We want to see what you've created. So. Yes. All right. Thank you all. Thank you for tuning in to CUI's TV. We hope you enjoyed the show. This video can be accessed anytime on youtube.com. In the YouTube search bar, type in UPTV6 and look for their microphone logo. We hope you will join us again next week for more local, engaging content designed specifically for Champaign County.